Total Energy's ambitious 20 billion gas project in Mozambique. There is a set of people whom we can only conveniently group together as Bantu-speaking peoples, because they are so widely distributed in Central, Eastern, and Southern Africa, and they speak a vast variety of Bantu languages. They are black Africans who built some of Africa's greatest civilizations, alongside the Shona. Some Bantu-speaking people from Central Africa migrated to Mozambique probably around the 3rd century AD, where they grew crops and raised cattle. However, the very first historical records of Mozambique were dated in the 10th century AD. Throughout history, imperialists would dish out war, for whatever reason as long as there was something to gain by that loss of lives. This time, the Portuguese waged war on the people inhabiting Mozambique using Goncalo da Silveira, leader of the first Jesuit mission to Eastern Africa, as a convenient excuse. He had been killed by the Shona people he had tried to convert. The Portuguese then sent a large army, which from 1569 to 1570, five attempted to conquer the Central African gold mining region. But as fate would have it, most of their attempts were fruitless. It was only much later that the Portuguese were able to gain some victory by using locally recruited armies. Today, Mozambique is on the verge of establishing one of Africa's largest liquefied natural gas projects, worth a whooping $20 billion. What a feat! Welcome to Think Rich Africa, the community which brings to you entrepreneurial, business, and personal development content to inform, motivate, and inspire you. We also want to introduce you to our special African development playlist because we strongly believe that entrepreneurship, rather than global pity, is the key to Africa's growth and development. So, if you're African and you aren't subscribed to our community, you're missing out. Mozambique is a southern African nation with a long Indian Ocean coastline dotted with popular beaches like Tofo, as well as offshore marine parks. Mozambique has four fields of natural gas reserves that could be exploited. Coral South, Mamba Complex, Golfinho Autumn Complex, and Prosperidade. These have a combined liquefied natural gas capacity of 55.48 million tons per annum. Mozambique therefore accounts for about 1% of the world's natural gas reserves. The Mozambique liquefied natural gas projects started with the discovery of an enormous quantity of natural gas off the coast of northern Mozambique in 2010. This led to a $20 billion final investment decision in 2019. At least 13 oil and gas companies delivered bids for the prospection and exploration of hydrocarbons in response to the sixth licensing round for exploration and production concessions. According to Radio Mozambique, RM, giant companies such as ExxonMobil and Total Energies delivered bids, as did two Russian companies Rosneft and Navadik. The Russian bids most likely didn't stand a chance to be considered as serious contenders, given the strict sanctions imposed by the United States and European countries on Russia in response to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Other oil giants that put in bids include the Italian ENI, Sinopec, CNUC, CNPC, and PetroChina International All Chinese Oil Giants. Qatar Petroleum, the South African petrochemical company Sasol, Onkvidish from India, the Irish Discovery Exploration and ADO from Nigeria equally put in bids for the project. But of course, Total Energy won that bid. Total Energies, formerly called Total, is a global multi-energy energy production and supply company. It deals in oil and biofuels, natural gas and green gases, renewables and electricity. It is one of the six energy supermajors in the world. Its activities cover the entire production chain, from the extraction of crude oil and natural gas to the production of energy, including in particular refining and commercial distribution activities. Founded in 1924 by Ernest Mercier under the name Compagni Francais des Petroles, its head office has been located in the La Defense District since the 1980s. The Total Energies Group is present in more than 130 countries and has more than 105,000 employees, almost 25% of whom are in France. Total Energies is also a major chemical company. Total Energies operates nearly 16,000 service stations worldwide and more than 3,500 service stations in France under the Total Energies, Total Energies Contact, 
Total Energy's access or ELAN, Total Energies is frequently blamed for the greenhouse gas emissions of its oil and gas activities, which are responsible for global warming. The company spends several tens of millions of euros each year, on the one hand, in lobbying to counter policies to fight against global warming, on the other hand, in communication in favor of its investments in renewable energies. In 2011, Total was ordered to pay 200 million euros in damages and 4 million euros in fines in Djibouti, even though the alleged acts were committed by the company Mobile Djibouti in 1997 and Mobile Djibouti had not not attacked them. After the takeover of Mobile Djibouti by Total, the state of Djibouti attacked Total. However, over the years, Total Energies has had quite a few altercations and a number of lawsuits to show for them. Some of these include the Bidiljuz explosion at Bantry Bay Terminal, the sinking of the oil tanker Erica and oil spill off Brittany in 1999, the explosion of AZF Grand Perois corruption in Iraq and other countries, the explosion at the Flanders refinery, and corruption in Libya. In July 2016, Total announced that it had entered into a sponsorship agreement with the Confederation of African Football. Total will now be the title sponsor of competitions organized by CAF. The agreement is valid for the next eight years and will concern the ten main competitions organized by CAF, including the African Cup of Nations, which is now called the Total African Cup of Nations. Total Energies has also created two new divisions within its head office, in addition to its finance division, which brings together the Financial Insurance and Information Systems Department. First, the People and Social Responsibility Unit, which brings together the Human Resources, Health, Safety, Environment and Security Departments, and a new Civil Society Commitment Department. The Strategy, Innovation Division, which brings together the Strategy and Climate Departments, responsible in particular for taking into account the objective of limiting global warming to 2 degrees Celsius in Total Energy Strategy, Public Affairs, Audit, Research and Development, the project is an integrated offshore gas field and onshore liquefied natural gas facility type of gas project. It therefore comprises the development of the Golfinho and Autumn gas field, located in the offshore area, one block of the 1,600 meter deep water Ravuma Basin. The Ravuma Basin is approximately 40 kilometer off the coast of Cabo Delgado, the northernmost province of Mozambique. The offshore area one is estimated to contain 75 trillion cubic feet of recoverable natural gas resources. Just imagine having 561 trillion American liquid gallons lined up. That's approximately the same volume of gas we're discussing here. And mind you, that is only for Area 1. Technib FMC, in consortium with Van Uwood, is the Engineering, Procurement, Construction, and Installation, EPCI, contractor for the offshore subsea system for the project. The onshore facility will consist of two liquefaction trains with a combined nameplate capacity of 12.88 million tons per annum initially. It will also house gas pretreatment facilities and full containment liquefied natural gas storage tanks. The liquefied natural gas production capacity of the facility is proposed to be further expanded up to 50 million tons per annum in the foreseeable future. The plant will receive feed gas supply from the Gofinho Autumn gas field through pipeline and produce liquefied natural gas for export to the Asian and European markets, as well as for domestic consumption in Mozambique. Other support facilities for the LNG plant will include materials offloading facility and a liquefied natural gas marine terminal capable of accommodating large liquefied natural gas carriers, which will also be shared with upcoming Area 4 liquefied natural gas projects. The Engineering, Procurement and Construction EPT, of the onshore liquefaction plant, along with its support facilities, will be undertaken by a consortium of contractor companies. The consortium leader, Siapum, was awarded a contract worth $6 billion, while McDermott, initially called Chicago Bridge and Iron, was awarded a contract worth $2 billion. Chiodo Corporation is also a part of the Onshore Contractors Consortium. The French oil and gas company Total Energy, which is the world's second largest liquefied natural gas player, 
holds 26.5% interest in the Ravuma Offshore Area 1 Exploration and Production Concession, and is therefore the majority stakeholder in the Mozambique Ravuma Offshore Area 1 Development Consortium. Total is also the operator of the project. Total acquired its 26.5% stake from the initial project operator, and Adarco Petroleum, now called Occidental Petroleum, for a staggering $3.9 billion. A good investment, if I do say so myself. For the return on such an investment in the long run will probably be more than just staggering. The other licensees are Mitsui Eid and P Mozambique Area, one following closely behind Total Energy with 20%, ENH Ravuma Area, one holding 15%, Ongfidish with 10%, Bees Ravuma Energy Mozambique with 10%, Barat Pet Resources Limited (BPRL), Ventures Mozambique (10%), and PTTAP Mozambique Area (one holding 8.5%). The market for gas obtained from the project already has a number of buyers. These include Electrosite de France, which will be getting 1.2 million tons per annum, Japan's Jira and Taiwan's CPC Corporation (1.6 million tons per annum), Sinu Gas and Power Singapore. 1.5 million tons per annum, Tokyo Gas and Centrica, 2.6 million tons per annum, Shell International Trading Middle East million tons per annum, Barrett Petroleum Corporation, 1 million tons per annum, and Indonesia's Pertamina, 1 million tons per annum. The project is expected to benefit the people of Mozambique in some ways. Hence, the project's previous operator, and Darko signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the government of Mozambique in December 2015 to provide 100 million cubic feet of gas a day from the facility for domestic consumption. Total Energy was convinced that the Mozambique Liquefied Natural Gas Project will deliver a range of social and economic benefits to Mozambique and its residents. Its geographic location positions the project well to meet Atlantic and Asia-Pacific market needs, as well as tap into the growing energy demands of the Middle East and Indian subcontinent, hence generating lots of revenue for the Mozambique government. In the short term, Construction of the liquefied natural gas facilities was expected to provide opportunities for professional training, employment, and contracts for the supply of goods and services. The construction phase would also manage environmental and social impacts and reduce risks. In the medium to long term, the Mozambique liquefied natural gas project would be a foundational step to diversifying Mozambique's economic activities. The project will help to develop competent construction and operation workforces, as well as bring forth subject matter experts that support those industries. It would also generate revenue that will play a most vital role in the socio-economic development of the country. Unfortunately, Milo Murphy's law, whatever can go wrong will go wrong, apparently became a real thing with this project, as both external and internal Mozambique-specific challenges have slowed the progress of liquefied natural gas developments in the country. Final investment decisions of both the liquefied natural gas projects were long delayed due to dispute over terms and concerns on the energy price slump and lack of sale and purchase agreements. The development plan for the Area 4 LNG terminal needed to be updated for further government approval. Raising tens of billions of dollars in project financing, part of which needs to be raised by the national oil company ENH, was not easy especially in a country that lacks financial credibility. This in turn increased the delays to the final investment decisions and also delayed the liquefied natural gas revenues coming online. East Africa is a frontier region with very limited infrastructure both offshore and onshore, including a lack of port facilities, road transport infrastructure, and offshore pipelines. The service sector was also likely to be in demand from other projects in the region, sharing its inadequate capacity and capability. You would think that the universe had put enough obstacles on the way for this project, but no, the worst was yet to come. There was some political violence near the border with Tanzania and multiple terrorist attacks in the area where the projects were under construction. The development of the liquefied natural gas projects also involved the resettlement of about 1,500 households that own houses or engage in agricultural or fishing subsistence activities in the Afungi Peninsula, where all infrastructures needed to be safely constructed. 
Multiple strikes were observed in the area, as workers in the construction consortium, led by Italian company CMC Africa Austral, claimed to be receiving unjustified pay cuts and no guaranteed holidays. It was understood that the construction consortium had to reach an agreement with the workers in terms of rights, benefits and wages, and make sure they stuck to the agreed terms. Climate analysts argued that the government's confidence in the project was misplaced, as increasing fossil fuel production did indeed clash with international climate goals. The 2019 Production Gap Report found that governments were collectively planning to extract 47% more gas by 2040 than can be burned within a 2C global warming limit. The government of Mozambique expected gas development to generate billions of dollars in revenue and raise the country to middle-income status by the mid-2030. However, this is based on price forecasts that are increasingly unlikely to materialize since the coronavirus pandemic hit demand and the terrorist attacks curtailed the materialization of the project. Residents were initially hopeful the gas discovery would bring jobs and investment to the area as was total energy. Instead, they are now facing an Islamic insurgency, which has killed at least 600 civilians since 2017 and targeted gas workers. Families have been moved from their homelands without compensation, while watching well-paid jobs go to the urban elite or foreigners. Due to the terrorist attacks, an insurgency total put the entire project on hold indefinitely in April 2021 by Force Majora. The Force Majora gave total a lot of breathing room with the construction companies and buyers of the gas, while increasing pressure on the Mozambican government to resolve the security situation. In response to this, the government dispatched regional forces to retake territories captured by terrorists, and at the end of January 2022, Patrick Payon, the CEO of Total Energy, made a statement declaring his hope that the project be recommenced in 2022. But once again, fate dealt this project an unfair hand. Recently, a new wave of violent attacks, which started after earlier attempts by regional forces to retake territories captured by the terrorists, has led to over 4,000 people losing their lives in execution-styled killings that often involved beheadings. More than 700,000 people are reported to have been displaced internally by the conflict. In June 2022 alone, over 10,000 Mozambicans have fled their homes. Total denied there was any forced displacement and insisted that the insurgency has nothing to do with the gas development. Whether or not this entire situation is an unfortunate coincidence, the people are suffering what the UN has termed a human catastrophe beyond epic proportions. Mozambique was even listed among the five conflict hotspots in Africa in an article recently posted on Business Insider. Do you think the total energy liquefied natural gas projects in Mozambique are worth pursuing? And what is your take on the terrorist attacks? Is it mere coincidence? Share your thoughts in the comments section.